Hello students, it's good to see you again. Uh, you might remember last time we did the fascinating facts about Japan. I want to make this a little bit bigger just so it's easier to see. Okay. Um, and today uh, we are going to go on to our next topic, which is going to be a land apart. So if you could skip a line and then put that in a box. I'm going to highlight it. You're going to put yours in a box. And go ahead and let's do our first note. So what we're talking about today is the concept of a land apart. Japan is a very fascinating place because it is uh, off the coast of Korea and off the coast of Asia uh, and is a series of islands. So it is a series of islands that is 100 miles off Asia. And hopefully you've been practicing drawing Japan. Uh, you should have drawn it four times now uh, using the links. And you will see that it's off the coast of Korea and Asia. Because of this, it was protected by the sea. So there are multiple examples of how Japan was not conquered because it was surrounded by the sea and difficult for other places to come take them over. So because it was not conquered, it was able to develop its culture in isolation. Isolation means all on its own. Now think about if you were a person who had never seen other people before. Do you think that your life would be really unique? Probably would, because you would have made it all up all yourself. Well, Japan has a very unique culture because it's protected and isolated. Now, it did choose to let in some aspects of other places' culture. Uh, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So for thousands of years, it was isolated, and it developed a unique culture. The geography of Japan also lends itself to isolation. It is smaller then California. Remember how many people it has? So many people, right? 127 million people. Uh, and the size of it, of the actual area of it, is smaller than California. I'm actually curious what the population of California is. Let's see what that is. Forty million people in California. So as you can see, uh, a lot more people in Japan, 127 million, three times the number of people in Japan as there is in California. And the area is smaller than California. It also, on top of that, has many mountains. In fact, only one-eighth of the land is flat in Japan. So seven-eighths of the land in Japan is mountainous. Remember when we talked up here about the population density of 874 people per square mile? Much more population density than the United States. You take that, and not only is that the population density of the whole nation, then you take that density and you put that all into one-eighth of the land. So you can see how there's a lot of large cities. And then there are also beautiful mountains throughout Japan where they are sparsely populated. Now, Japan did choose to let in some influence. So, for example, they were great admirers of the Chinese culture, and there was a great influence of China. So they actually sent people to China to learn about China and had people come from China to teach them, and they decided to use some of their uh, inventions. Pretty smart. So one of the things that they did is they adopted some of the medicine from China. They adopted the writing of China, so that's called kanji. You can actually write Chinese writing and a Japanese person will understand it even though the spoken language is different. And they also adapted some of the government and laws of China. Another piece of influence from China, which is really common in Japan, is that philosopher which you've heard of, Confucianist. Confucianism, Confucius. So Confucianism is really common in Japan this idea that duty and respect and obeying the rules is very important. Now, right next to China is Korea, 
and Korea also has influenced Japan quite a bit. Uh, some of the things that came from Korea specifically were Buddhism, which started in India, went up the Silk Road into China, and then spread into Korea, and then across the uh, sea there into Japan. There's also a lot of uh, great pottery that's been developed in Korea that was adopted in Japan, weaving techniques, and also metalwork. Now there's some really awesome stories about how the Mongols tried to attack Japan. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that story right now. So basically what happened is uh, the Mongols took over uh, all of Asia and even into Europe and across the Middle East. If you watch that movie about Genghis Khan, which I hope you did that I sent a week or so ago, uh, you would understand a lot about the Mongols. So the Mongols tried to attack Japan twice. And the first time they were basically winning, they had taken all these boats over to Japan and they were about to conquer Japan. Uh, and they went back to their boats uh, overnight to wait. And while they were waiting to do that final battle, a huge typhoon, which is a massive storm, came and essentially wrecked their boats and they had to flee Japan. And the Japanese believed that that was a divine wind brought by the gods to drive the Mongols away. And they call that a kamikaze. So the kamikaze wind destroys the ships of the Mongols. And there's actually uh, evidence of how this happened multiple times. Uh, and so when you read anything about kamikaze and what that means, that's a reference to the Japanese history and how they were able to uh, stay intact as a culture because the Mongols were driven away. Uh, so we are going to learn a lot about how Japan is a very unique culture because of their isolation. Hopefully as you are doing your Kodawari assignments, you will learn a lot about the uniqueness of Japan's culture. Hope you're enjoying that. Thanks for listening and taking notes. See you soon.